What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? That's your girl, Nick, coming to you with a review for BMF episode number two, Rumors. So, this episode picks up with Meech in the car driving, rushing to the hospital um, to see Terry. This child pulls up in the hospital with an Uzi. Coach is there because, as I said in the last um, video, in episode one, we find out that Coach is actually a cop. So he, um, another cop approaches Meech in the middle of the hospital, in the middle of the ER, and tells him that, um, you know, he pulls out a gun uh, because he sees Meech with his gun. And we see Coach come and say, oh, I got this, I got this. And he tells Meech, give me the gun. You can see your brother if you give me the gun. So Meech gives Coach uh, the gun. He puts the gun on one, gives it to Coach. And he goes in to see um, Terry. Terry has been shot in the head. It looks like the bullet went through his eye and everything. Um, he tries to ask Terry. I believe he asked him, tried to ask him who he think did it and stuff. And Terry's like, tell mommy, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then that's when Terry starts to, like, cold a little bit. So they put Meech out of the room, and they go working on Terry again. When Meech goes out, he goes back out near where the entrance to the ER is. And here comes, um, first comes the crew. So the crew, Lil Zane character is named Saki. When we see them come in, I did not realize Lil Zane is that short in real life. Like, I don't think the one who's playing Meech is really tall. So, and he was like a lot shorter than him. He was even shorter than um, the the young lady playing Kato, who was the only member of their crew. I mean, the only female member of their crew or whatever. So, you know, Meech gives the word, like, get p p hire some goons to follow my family around and keep them safe and make sure that nobody else attacks. Uh, you know, try to do anything to somebody or whatever. And so, um... The tall friend, is his name B, B, his name B something, but he, um, he's like the third in command with Meech and Terry. Um, he's like, we already stretched really thin with what's going on as far as like selling the drugs and things. So he's like, I don't care. We got to hire some goons. He said, and they goons for a reason. You know, he didn't think it was a good idea to hire these people to uh, protect anybody, but Meech does what he wants or whatever because he's the one in charge. So he does, does that. And as he's talking to them to get that done, the, his father, his mother, and his little sister walks in. The mother's first words are, you did this. It's it's because of you. And he was like, it's not. He got somebody tried to rob him and carjack him. Yeah, because uh, Coach did whisper in, um, in Tamichi's ear, like, as far as I know, unless you tell me something different or give me more information than Terry. Excuse me, something's on my mouth. Unless you give me more information than Terry, um, we're going to look at this as a carjacking going wrong. He was shot um, via carjacking or whatever. Because he's looking out for the boy. So I guess he's like a dirty cop that's on the payroll of Meech. Or maybe he knew him from, they might have been on the baseball team or whatever when he was coaching. And he took a liking to them and he's looking out for for them in particular. But anyway, uh, the mom blames Meech. She's yelling like, it's because of you stay away from him and all this and that. So the father is like holding her back and telling her to calm down. Um, She said, if he, if he dies, it's on you. That's what the mom said to, Lucille said to, uh, Meech. So then, wait a minute, hold on. Okay. So after, uh, he leaves the hospital, he goes home and goes on attack mode trying to figure out who the hell shot his brother. He approaches, um, from what I can see, what sticks out to me, he approaches Kwame. Kwame is the one that was in his class, that's in Terry's class, that was all in Terry, um, business about having a baby and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and tried to fight Terry at Mr. Pat's party. Um, Meech beats him up, you know, pistol whips him, and he crying and crying, saying, it wasn't me, I ain't have nothing to do with it. So, my theory last week that it was either him or, um, J-Mo, and J-Mo is the leader 
of the 12th Street gang. I thought it was either of them, but it really wasn't. It was who I wasn't suspecting at all. It was that crazy-ass Lamar. Lamar did that because he was mad. He's mad that he don't have no corners, and he wanted to start a war because he wanted to get all the corners back to himself or whatever, right? So it was Lamar that did it, that, um, that actually shot uh, Terry. And we see that when at the uh, Meech beats uh, Pistol Whips Kwame, we go to a scene where we see Lamar looking at the 12th Street boys on the corner. So it's, um, it's J-Mo is the leader, the little brown skin one with the fade, the curly fade that was doing all the talking when they met up at the citywide, um, the city championship basketball game. He the leader of the 12th Street boys. So it was J-Mo. It's a light-skinned tall guy that looked like he a little older than J-Mo. His name is Slick, okay? Uh... And then the little light-skinned dude that played in ATL, his name was Romel or Rom, Rom, Romlo. I think his name was Romel or Romel or something like that. Anyway, they all were standing out there and Lamar approaches and said he wanted to get put on. Um, Romel tells J-Mo, like... This nigga's like, no, he is not the one to put on. We can't, it's like, you can't trust him because you don't know what he's going to do. And he's, he used to run these streets, and who's to say that he's not going to try to usurp you and take your spot, take your position? And he's like, no, I'm going to give him a chance. So he tells uh, Lamar to go with Slick or, and do drops or do runs or some shit. So they get in the car to go do something, and when they get in the car, we find out that Slick used to be part of Lamar's crew back in the day before Lamar got knocked and went away. Um, he Slick tells him, man, shit just went crazy after you left. Everybody just split up and was doing their own thing and all this and that. There's no more of the group. And so um, Lamar tells him, well, I got to try to get back in here. So what I'm going to do is... You know, niggas always want to whisper, so we're going to put some rumors out here or whatever. So, he basically let Slick know he the one who shot Terry. And what they're going to do to try to boost a war um, and us us usurp, usurp, I mean, um, J-Mo from the role of the leader of the 12th Street Boys or whatever. We're going to tell, we're going to put a rumor out there that J-Mo is the one that shot Terry or got sh Terry shot. When it really was Lamar the whole time. So, uh, Slick goes and starts whispering that to people or whatever. And um, that's how the rumor starts. It starts to go around. Then we see a scene where uh, Terry's in the hospital. We see Terry in the hospital. He's talking to his baby mother. I still have not caught this child's name. But she's scared. And she admits that she's scared. She wants him to get out of the game. He said no, because this is how he take care of her and the baby. You know, he's he going to keep doing what he's doing or whatever. She was like, but I'm scared. I want you to quit. He said, no, I'm not going to quit. And then he admits to her that he's, he's scared too or whatever. But he not quitting the game or whatever. Um, they, uh, we see... We see Lamar go to a school and approach the little girl, Zoe. And her mother's name, Cash Doll character, her name is Mo. It is Mo. That is, Mo is short for Monique. Okay. He goes to the school. The little girl gives him a perturbed look. He's trying to get her to go with him. She was like, I can't go with you. You know, and she's weirded out by him. She's nervous. So she walks off and she leaves and he, he yells after her. And then like a male teacher or administrator, school administrator, approaches Lamar tells him he has to leave or whatever. And so... At some point, we see Lamar and Six, I mean, Lamar and Slick working on the car, doing something, setting some shit up, right? And we see a car pull up, a nice old little sports car pull up. It's white. It's Monique. And she yelling at him like, nigga, don't you ever, like, go up to my school and, um, I mean, go up to the school and try to see my daughter. I didn't told you that's not your daughter. And he was like, well, I was in her life since for a long time, and she was calling me daddy, so I still consider y'all my family. And the family need to be together. She need to, she need her family together or whatever. And she was like, I don't give a fuck. Like, don't go approach my daughter. So um, 
But he said something like he got real close to her. I forget exactly what he said. But he said something crazy, something to her to make her step back and really look at him and how crazy he really, and really understand how crazy he is or whatever, right? So she pulls off. Uh, him and Slick also have a conversation about Romel, which is J which was Jamo's second person, like right hand man. He was like, um, because at some point Meech went and tried to again. He thought he could go talk to Romel and get Romel to want to like make a partnership with him and um and the Fiftieth Street Boys because he don't really want a war. He want he he really tried to make this like a mafia family with all these people in charge and all that kind of stuff. And Romel was like, "Nigga, get out of here!" Like, no, I'm not doing it. So of course, um, after Meech left, Romel told uh, J Mo what happened, and of course J Mo told Slick or whatever. Or they had the conversation all together, but we don't see them all together having this conversation. Uh, J Mo is discussing that with Slick. I mean, not J Mo. Slick is discussing that with Lamar. So Lamar was like, "We can if we can get at him, meaning if we can get at uh, Romel." And knock this nigga down too. Then we could kind of like get in J Mo ear or whatever. Because Lamar' goal is, like I said, Lamar used to have E Course, Southwest, uh, Southwest Detroit, which is where the Fifty Street Boys is, which is uh, Meech and Terry's crew. He used to have that area, and I for, I can't I, I I cannot remember the name of the third area. But um, they um they decided they're gonna approach Rom um well Lamar gonna approach Romel and do something to him I guess um then we see a scene with we see a scene with um the parents in the hospital the parents are in the hospital talking they they um. They they in the room and we find out Terry has now got some kind of infection. Terry tried to get up and walk and go check on his brother because he know his brother out there in the streets tearing shit up trying to figure out who shot him. And when he walked down the hallway, he he collapses. So the doctors come back in and the parents actually show up and they're in the room and um they was like. Uh, the father is yelling at the doctor, like, did y'all do something wrong? Because the doctor said something about an infection. He said, so y'all messed up. Y'all did something wrong. I swear to God, if my son won't um doesn't have 20-20 after this, then I'm suing this fucking hospital. I'm suing all of y'all. I'm getting my lawyer in. It's going to be a lawsuit, a big-ass lawsuit on all of y'all. So the doctor looks shook. After that, uh, him and Lucille and Charles, which is are the parents, they go outside of the room to have a conversation. And basically, Charles is like, "Listen, we I told um, Meech to get out because we didn't we don't touch drugs, we don't deal and that kind of stuff." He's a he's a Bible thumping man, right? He got the Bible and all that. And we see a scene with him holding the Bible and praying. He's like, "We don't touch that." And here it is in our house. When he started selling drugs, I knew it. I said, "Put him out." You wouldn't put him out. We found that gun. I said, "Put him out." And you put him out, but you really didn't put him out because he's still coming back and forth. And so he was saying that, you know, we got to think about ourselves. We got to think about Nicole and we have to think about Terry. And the other thing is, I think Terry, you got to accept the fact that Terry is with Meech selling drugs. And the mom was like, no, no, he's not. No, he's not. It's just Meech or whatever. And I can't put my son out because if something go, if I put him out and he go out in the streets and get killed or hurt, then... Imagine how I'm going to feel then. And the father's like, imagine if how you would feel if something happened to Nicole because of what he's doing. Or something happened to uh, you or I because of what, is, what he's doing, what Meech is out there doing. Are you, how can you forgive yourself for that? And so she stood there with a look. Like, the father's like, put their ass out of the house because we ain't a part of that life and we don't want to get caught up in nothing. Um, that's a byproduct of living that kind of lifestyle or whatever. And so we also see a scene with uh, Meech going to the hospital and it's just him and Terry in there talking. And this episode, I'm guessing we're going to get like a nice little quote a quote um, from them every episode. And I'm going to call that the, um, the BMF 
affirmation. The first week was STO, see it, touch it, obtain it. That was the poop. This um this ad- affirmation for this episode, rumors, the episode is called rumors, was from the womb to the tomb <laughs> that they say to each other and give each other a pound. Because uh, in that conversation, Terry told me, you know, he is afraid, but he not giving up. He's still going to be out there with him or whatever, selling drugs and stuff. So we see... um. We see Romel come out of the side of some building. And we see Lamar get out the car and approach him. Lamar goes to stab it or hit hit him in the chest and trying to kill him. Or whatever. Uh, Romel fights for his life. It's a nice little tussle for a second. I thought Romel had a shot because he hit Lamar with um, with a bottle upside his head. And knock Lamar out. And so he got to kicking him and stuff. But then Lamar regained his strength and his composure. And beat him in the face. Banged him into the uh, the industrial uh, dumpster that's outside of this place. And then threw his ass in the dumpster. So I'm thinking that Romel is in the dumpster dead. Also, um, we saw a scene with uh, Meech. No. It was Meech Homeboy, his name Big Something. Big M, I can't think of his name right now. But the third in command. Him, I think it's B Mackey. Or B Mac or something like that. But they sitting in the car. Him and the girl, him and Kato were sitting in the car. I forgot to mention it was a scene where him and Kato were together. Um they were in the park with two of the other guys. And the uh two other guys was like, you know, they had heard the rumors and um, they was mad that Meech wasn't doing anything about the fact that they said it was J-Mo. Mac don't believe that it was J-Mo. He think that's just a rumor. He um, he like, but what if it really wasn't him or whatever? And then they talking about, you know, how can we ride for him and show we down? And he sit here and let people talk shit. Like, that means they're going to be trying to try us, so basically. And they wanted to do something. And he was like, no, 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 we not. So then uh, Kato let the boys know, like, relax, relax on that shit. Believe he got he got a purpose and he got a plan or whatever. So, um, saying that Meech got a plan. So, so shut that talk down, like, shut that shit down or whatever. So they go about their business. And her and uh, Mac have a pound and, like, an understanding. He, like, thanks for, um, you know, saying that or whatever. You know, putting them niggas, getting them niggas together. She said, yeah, but that's going to hold them for now. It ain't going to hold them for long. So then they have a, a meeting with Meech. Meech decides that he want to get a new trap house or whatever. And um, some other trap house. So they go to the other trap house, um, Mac and Kato. And uh, Mac is um, walking through the house and, you know, about to get things together so they can do what they got to do to cook. She like, you sure nobody in this house? He said, yeah. Because she looks down, she saw a container, a food container with bones. And she saw some shoes or some shit on the ground. And at that moment, uh, Mac is in another room. At that moment, some man, some junkie, comes and bum rush her and knocks her on the fucking floor. But she's able to get herself together and flip him over on top of him, choking him. And, um... Matt comes from the other room when he hit a commotion, and she said, I thought you said, wasn't nobody in this bitch. And so they have it. They tied, we see him tied up, and they beating him. He done been in the drugs and shit, too, because I think the drugs was already there. He been in them because his face is all white. And then he done messed up the drugs, knocked the shit over or whatever. And so she like, we're going to sweep this shit up and still try to sell it. And he said, no, it's been stepped on. You don't know what was on the floor or whatever, so... She was like, well, we're going to have to tell Meech. And he didn't really want to tell Meech, but of course he got to tell him. Meech comes. They see the junkie or whatever. He cut the junkie loose, let the junkie leave. And he tells them something. And he goes on about his business. But Meech, I mean, mm, Kato and Mac. Mac likes Kato. And we find out that Kato is not from Detroit. She's from the South. And he was like, you real different. You got something different about you. And, um... She's, like, staying with him in his mom's basement or whatever, right? And there's a scene of them two sitting down there. But after that, before that scene, we see them sit in the car. And then we see Meech pull up with uh, the detective. um, Well, the cop. We call him Coach or whatever. That's Steve Harris. 
he has J-Mo in the car. And he said, ruffle his feathers and that's it. Like, don't hurt him, hurt him. So they put him on the ground and they pull his, uh, the tape off his mouth or whatever. And Michi's asking him, like, nigga, why the fuck you get my brother shot? And he beating him, pistol whipping him and shit. He crying, saying it wasn't, I ain't even have nothing to do with that. I don't know what, I don't even know what you're talking about for real. I didn't have anything to do with that. He begging and pleading for his life. And Mac um, ended it. Mac just pulled out his gun and shot J-Mo and he had killed him. Meech mad at him, like, nigga, what the fuck? I'm the one in charge. I say what goes. He said, man, he's sitting out here like a little bitch begging for his life and shit. You know? Um, I just shut that nigga up. I, I cleaned it up for you. We won't tell people that you did it, even though I'm the one that did it. He said, nigga, I don't want you to do that. Like, I make the fucking decisions around here. That's what Meech is telling Matt. So he mad at Mac because uh, we saw in another scene earlier in the episode, Mac is quick on the trigger. Like, he quick to pull out a gun and shoot somebody or whatever. And, um, Meech, that's not how Meech want to do things. Meech want to do things peaceful. Like I said, the, to draw less attention from the cops and get like a whole, like a con cl uh, conglomerate going, you know? I forgot to also mention, there was a scene of Slick and Lamar and that dad going fast food place again. Slick at the table eating. We hear somebody having sex. <coughs> Excuse me. We hear somebody having sex, right? <clears throat> and it's a restaurant full of people. But you hear a woman moaning, screams. Lamar got some fucking woman in the bathroom on the floor, giving her back shots in the fucking bathroom on the floor. So then he comes out of the bathroom, sits down, get his clothes together. And then the woman comes out after him and she says, see you next time. And he said, yep. So Slick looking at him like, no, Lamar said she got a lot of ass. And Slick is like, she got a whole lot of other shit too because she was a plus size woman or whatever. So, of course, Slick like, man, we can get you better than that. And, um, you know, we you can get better than her. And Lamar's like, nigga, beggars can't be Jews and she good. He said, but help me try to get my family back. What I got to do, he was like, Slick was like, nigga. You got to learn how to be smoother, slick, smooth talk her, like make her a CD with some music. She like music, you know, do this and do that, trying to get Monique back because he want Monique to be his again. And he, you know, he basically let Slick know that, you know, he shot Terry in the face because all his corners are gone. And Meech got his fucking, what he considers to be his baby mother. Don't nobody mess with his baby mother. So he asked Slick for a pen and a piece of paper. We don't know what he going to do. So then we did see a scene with Lamar and Monique sitting on some porch. And he talking to her real nice. And he was like, look at this. She said, you wrote all these letters. So this nigga sat there and wrote a bunch of letters and tried to fake like he wrote all these letters while he was locked up. He was writing a letter every day. And he just never gave them all to her. And she believed him. So she said she going to work on, you know, talking to the little girl to see if the little girl going to want to see see him or whatever and um i'm trying to think if anything else happened oh it was also a scene where we see uh meech go pick up nicole and nicole was over at e park i mean e course which is where the uh 12th street boys is and they think that that's who did something to their brother so he fussing in the car with her. She tried to jump out the car. He locks all the locks and um, uh, locks all the locks from his side so she can't get out. Then they pull up to like uh, I guess it's the lake and like where people walk or whatever. Um, he pulls uh, um, up to there to talk to her, told her to get out, and he's talking to her. She like she feels invisible in their family. The mother dotes on Terry. The mother mad at Meech. And because she's so focused on them too, she don't get no attention. And she feels invisible in her own family. And he told, and she said, she tired of uh, lying and trying to um, cover for the fact that Terry is also selling drugs with Meech. Um, Meech is like, I never asked you to tell that or lie, lie to moms about that or whatever. So she said, but I'm trying to keep you all covered or whatever. And she said, and, and on top of that, she she's still mad about not being able to go on that trip. And uh, Meech is like, you know what? You 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 lying for Terry and all that. 
but you don't say nothing about the fact that Terry give you money, keep keep money in your pocket. Terry buy you clothes all the time with that same money that he sells drugs with. And Terry could have paid, you know, we would pay for you to go on that field trip. So you can't be acting like this and you cannot be going over to E-Course for anything. You know, it's dangerous out here, whatever. We got to watch ourselves and I'm trying to watch the whole family. And um, the father did tell me at some point in the episode that he did notice that some of them little goons been following them around everywhere they go trying to protect me. Like, I don't want them protecting me. You think I'm stupid? I, I know when I see um them goons hanging around or whatever. So, um... That was basically episode number two, Rumors. Uh, this episode was also, it was okay. Um, I didn't expect J-Mo and Romel to die this fast. Because um, I'm assuming that they're both dead. Um, uh, Mac, or whatever his name is, he's shot uh, J-Mo point blank in the side of the head. And he fell over, so I know he did. But I'm not sure if Romel gonna be actually dead and Romel know saw Lamar and knows it was Lamar that attacked him too so maybe he might not be dead and then that's gonna make Romel realize that Lamar did everything or whatever you know set all this stuff in motion and he might be the one who actually shot Terry you know he might put it together because he, he don't look like he a dumb guy or whatever but this episode was decent thank y'all for watching my review it's time for me to get ready for Going into the office for real, for real. Uh, I don't like going in there. I got so used to telework, you know. But y'all have a great day. Have a great week as well. Also, remember to be kind to another person and show the people the same love that you that you want to receive in return. Um, and y'all just have a good day, okay? Be blessed. What's up, y'all? And one other thing. Don't forget to like the videos, get down in the comments, and let's discuss the show. And also subscribe to my channel. Peace.